Okay, every single week we do the great search, Ditch Key. What are we looking for this week, Lydia? Like a great tune. That's right. Now with lyrics. Um, so, uh, folks who've been watching the Adafruit site have noticed that uh, we have been going through and stemma QTifying um, a lot of our sensors and devices. So, um, you know, the List 3DH, for example, used to be just a plain breakout. We stopped it for many years. Uh, it's Project ID 2809, but then like two weeks ago, we stemma QTified it. We added um, plug and play sensors and made it kind of the standard one inch by 0.7 inch shape. We did the same thing for this uh, VL53 LOX um, and the OLED. So we've been going through and adding these plug and play connectors to make it really easy for people to say use it with the Cutie Pie. They just, they just plug in whatever they want, no soldering required. You can get a, pretty far uh, without having to worry about any wiring issues. And um, uh, fellow Adafruiter JP was asking, hey, you know, do you know when you're going to have the STEM QT version of the NPR-121? This is a very popular capacitive touch sensor, the NPR-121 people. You know, people in the maker community have been using this chip for like over a decade. And um, we've got a breakout, and you can even see there's like even a little bit of space here. We could add the two STEM QT connectors. It, would, it wouldn't even really change physical shape, which would be really nice. Um, unfortunately, the NPR-121 is no longer made. It's discontinued. Now, there's enough in stock around the world that I'm able to kind of keep the current breakouts and shields that we make available, but you can't buy more of these, really. I mean, and I wouldn't design um, a new breakout using this chip because any day now, <clears throat> I'm going to get, uh, you know, news that you, I can't even get back stock. There's no gray market available either. It's completely gone, uh, which is a shame because it's a really nice chip. Not sure why NXP discontinued this. Anyways, um, so JP is saying, hey, on the next uh, great search, can you show, you know, you showed how to find alternatives when there's like a clear alternative, but what if there isn't like a suggested alternative? What if it's like really obsolete? There's really discontinued and there's no equivalent. So I thought, let's, because this is a common thing, let's go over and show what I do and how I'm going to find the alternative chip that I could use to make a STEM QT breakout. Now the NPR-121 is discontinued. Um, so this is so discontinued that like you can't even back order it. Um, it's, it's just completely deleted off of like the website. Like it's still there for record. Um, and you can see that, you know, they, they do stock our breakouts and there's other breakouts like from DF Robot or Micro E or Seed. But for the most part, like this chip isn't available. Well, the first thing you want to do is uh, pop up the, um, the data sheet, which I actually have in the tutorial. So I'm going to open the data sheet. So this is the um, NPR-121, and you want to look at the pinout. Um, and if you're lucky, you'll be able to find a chip that has an equivalent pinout. I will say, once in a while, you find a chip that's discontinued, and there's an equivalent pinout version, like uh, the HMC uh, magnetometer, the 5883, HMC 5883, was a very popular magnetometer by Honeywell. They discontinued it. And another company made the MMC 5883, which is pin compatible. It wasn't software compatible, but it was pin compatible. If you're lucky, that's available. So let's see, let's see if we're lucky. So I'm going to take advantage of this product attributes search again. It's very powerful when you're looking for alternatives. Um, so I want to search within the capacitive touch sensors. I don't need to be by NXP. Um, I do want it to be I squared C. I don't care about the inputs. I'll tell you why, because what if it has 20 inputs or 24 inputs? I just want something that has at least 12. So I'm going to actually leave this unchecked. And I do want it to be surface mount. Um, and then, you know, if I'm lucky, it's pin compatible and it's voltage compatible, but nothing else is, is like as specific. So let's view similar. Um, okay, so now we're going to, again, uh, because we don't want to get stuck with uh, you know, selection of the NPR-121 again, let's apply only active. 
And then, okay, see, because sometimes there's up to 16 inputs or 12 inputs. So I want at least 12 inputs. So I'm going to control click and go through, wow, there's like 150 inputs. It's like some multiplex thing. And let's uh, apply the filters. Okay, cool. Um, so looks like there's, you know, buttons up to 16, up to eight. So this is kind of cool. This one is a little nutty. Oh, this is like a touchpad controller that also has, I guess, button support. That's too many though. I don't need something like this. And also it's not individual. Like you can tell it's a 48 QFN. You have to have one electrode per connector. So this isn't, this isn't probably going to be what I want. Um, so next up, let's do more filters. So all these voltages look good to me because I'm okay with it running at 3.3 volts. Um, I don't want something huge. So I'm going to pick all of these 32 and less. And I think the 72 inputs is kind of bonkers. So I'm just going to select 25 or less. Okay. Well, next up, actually, because I selected all of them, there's a lot more options than last time. Let me look to see if there's any that use the exact same um, package that uh, this one has. So this is a 20 pin. If you go down to the bottom, you can see the package. Packages are always at the bottom of the data sheet, by the way. So this is a three by three 20 QFN. Yeah, we might be lucky. So here's a, a 20 QFN three by three. And here's another QFN. Note that one's a VQFN and one's a QFN. What's the difference? I don't, I don't know. I just call them QFNs. I don't know what the, V sometimes is like very thin. It's like, okay, great. Um, okay, it looks like there's a couple options here. Cool. These are all up to 12. So let's start with the Scilabs one. Oh, okay. So when you see this, ah, oh, this happens. You see this big warning? It says not recommended for new designs. That's, that's the thing you gotta watch out for. It's still available, but they're, they're basically giving you a hint that like, hey, like this isn't gonna be around for very much longer. We might just continue this at any time. Warning. Warning. Yeah, I like how they put it on every page. So again, let's go to the bottom of the data sheet and find the, sorry, the, I actually don't want it to be at the bottom. I want that to be at the top and I want to find the pinout. Let's find the pinout. Pinout, 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 pinout. They don't have it here. Hold on. This really drives me a little nuts. They should always have the pin at the top. Okay. So looks like they have the uh, connectors going around here and then pin three is ground, pin four is VDD. So then we compare that to this and we'll see it's, it's definitely not compatible because you see this has power and ground on pin six and 20, like they're across from each other. And this has power and ground on pins three and four. So the CPT112, first off, it's not recommended for new designs. Eh. Uh, and second, um, it's not pin compatible anyways. So we'll keep it in mind, but it, you know, it's not recommended. Okay, and then um, there's more in that family, the CPT series, um, but it's pretty much either CPT112s or the AT42 QTs. So let's check out the, uh, the next one down, which is the um, AT42QT. So this one is by Atmel. It comes in a bunch of different packages. Um, SOIC, TSOP, QFN, and it has two modes, a comms mode where you use I squared C and then a standalone mode, which I really like. Standalone mode is really cool because it lets you um, basically have capacitive touch buttons that go straight to GPIO. Uh, you don't need a microcontroller at all. So it's like you can plug it into any kind of electronics. But let's look at the uh, QFN. So 
uh, it does have 12 keys. So you can see key zero through key 11, so there's 12 inputs. But again, the power and ground, I always just look at those first because if those don't match, I can't make anything else match. These are on pins eight and nine, which doesn't match the way that the MPR-121 has. So this isn't pin compatible, but it is functionally compatible. Um, it has I squared C, it has the 12 inputs, has power, it has I squared C, it has reset, it has like an interrupt. So, you know, that's going to be very similar to, you have an IRQ, I squared C, and then, you know, a couple other pins and power, and then 12 elements. So, you know, this isn't a bad uh, uh, replacement. You would have to relay out your board. Um, but maybe that's worth it. You know, that, that does happen every few years. You'll find you can't find a part. You might not need to respin the board. However, like the overall functionality, I think is close enough that I would probably pick this as an alternative. Um, this one looked really good, but again, it's not recommended for new designs, which is kind of a little scary to me. I don't want to get involved with another chip that's going to break my heart. So that's... Uh, that's how I found an equivalent for the NPR 121. You're wondering what should I use? I can't get that. Uh, check out the AT42QT 2120 series from Atmel Microchip. Uh, they've got a couple different packages. Uh, I'm sure if you look online, you'll probably find some example code from them or others. A, a nice 12 input capacitive touch controller. All right, that's a great search for DigiKey. Found it. <laughs>